G'day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph and today I want to talk about the fact that God lives inside of you. And it's so amazing to think that the God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, he is living inside of you. And I know a lot of times uh, I don't think I'm valuable uh, I'm no one special. I'm just here by myself, and you know I don't don't do great things like these great names that you always know about. But God chose me, and I'm His child. And He says, "I love you. You're valuable." And I chose to live inside of you. And so now the Lord is living inside of you, and He's living inside of me. And that's just incredible. Now, when Jesus came to Earth and He died for us on the cross, uh, three days later the Lord raised Him from the dead. And then 40 days later, Jesus ascended up to heaven. For f 14 days, the disciples had to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. And then, of course, 50 days after the day that Jesus was crucified, uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh on the day of Pentecost. Right? Uh, and so uh, the amazing thing is they heard this um, a mighty rushing wind. And then I saw this fire coming out of heaven and it divided into tongues of fire and sat on each one's head. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they started to pray in tongues. And suddenly uh, those disciples and all those people that received the Holy Spirit uh, had the power of God inside of them. And, and that was a major shift. You know, the last time someone really had God inside of them other than Jesus uh, was Adam and Eve. They were in a garden. They had God inside of them. And when they sinned, then, um, the glory of God left them. And God wasn't inside anybody until Jesus died and washed us clean with his blood. And now the Lord could pour his Holy Spirit. Not just to sit on top of us like on King David or you know the prophets, but the Lord was inside. He was dwelling in us. We became a temple of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, we read there about Jesus. It says, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit. All right? uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit means there is oil. You know, anointing is oil. Uh, it's also a kingship. When you say anointed one, you mean a king. Uh, but when you say anointing, you talk about oil. And so just like if you think about your engine at your car and your gearbox, that gearbox needs to be full of oil always. If you're going to drive your car and you don't have oil in your gearbox, then that gears are going to seize up and it's not going to function. And in essence, for hundreds of years, mankind was kind of seized up because it was trying to function without oil in it and it was never designed or created to function without oil. But Jesus had the oil of the Holy Spirit in him. And so that's why he could go around, do good. He could cause out the demons, heal the people and show signs, wonders, miracles. The glory of God was flowing out of his life. And that is what's going to happen with us when we give our life to Jesus. Now we are filled with God in us. We can pray in tongues. We can have the power of the Holy Spirit flow out of us, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we can actually start to live and be who God called us to be. One of the main functions that the Lord is giving to us today to do is to bring heaven to earth. And uh, to, to bring heaven to earth, it's important that we will be able to access heaven, go to heaven, see what's in heaven, receive what's there, put it inside of us, come to this earth, open up our door and let that what is in heaven flow through us into this earth. And so in order to do it, the first thing is, it's important for us to see in the Spirit. So when you worship and you, you know, you close your physical eyes, but you look in the realm of the Spirit, then the Lord will start to show you things. He will also give you an opportunity to start to participate with what He is doing in the realm of the Spirit, what He's doing in heaven. And so we see, then we participate. And then, of course, we want to, what we saw, we want to come and we want to declare it uh, with our mouth. And then, of course, we want to act in obedience. We want to take those acts of faith to manifest what God showed us in heaven and that's the process to bring what's in heaven to earth now the scripture says there in Acts chapter 2 uh, that you know the Lord is giving us visions and he's giving us dreams it says the old men will dream dreams the young men will see visions uh, and then I'll pour out my Holy Spirit on my maid servants uh, uh, men servants and my maid servants and they will prophesy and so it's important for you to flow in visions in dreams and in prophecy because when you go into the realm of the spirit and you see what God uh, shows you then you need to open up your mouth and you need to uh, say what God has said you have to declare it you have to prophesy the word of the Lord and that's one of the vital steps for what's in heaven to then come to earth when you give your life to Jesus and you say Jesus is my Lord and my Savior then you become born again 
and you receive salvation. The Lord heals you. He fills you up with His Holy Spirit and with Himself. And then uh, you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. All right? And so therefore now suddenly this body of you uh, is holy. This body is the place where God lives. That's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then of course, as you allow Jesus then to become a Lord in your life, uh, and then that gate inside of you, opens up and the river of living water can flow through you so you notice what happens the glory of god is in heaven it flows from heaven to you and then from you it flows out of you to this earth one of our biggest obstacles that we have as children of god and in thinking about this idea that god actually lives in me is that we have a slave mentality now when you are born a slave, you think like a slave, you feel restricted and limited and you feel like the I can attain nothing because I was born a slave. Now, of course, if you are born the child of a king, then suddenly you would think completely different. If you're a man, you say, well, I'm a prince and I've got uh, privileges and I've got power and authority and I'm someone special because I am a child of someone special. And if you are uh, a daughter of the king, then you say, wow, I'm a princess and, and I've got special powers and privileges and I'm loved and I'm adored by the people uh, because I am a child of the king. Now, I want to tell you, you are a child of the king and it's important for us to start stop thinking like a slave and have a slave mentality and start thinking like a child of god and realize but i am a child of god i have the identity in christ remember jesus is perfect and we are in him and so because we are a child of god a prince uh, a princess uh, a, a son and daughter of God and we are in him that means we receive his identity and so we have our identity in Christ all right uh, and God is inside of us uh, and that that's the most amazing things so I want to pray for you that the Lord will break off a mentality which says but I'm not valuable so remember in the beginning I said I don't always feel valuable uh, but it come, it shatters all my ideas when I think about the fact that God actually lives inside of me. So Father, I pray for each one that listen to this. And Lord, um, you are saying to them, you are my child, you are valuable, you are special, you are a temple uh, of the Holy Spirit and I live inside of you. And so Father, I pray for each one, Lord, that uh, that uh, slave mentality will be broken off of them right now. And Lord, that they will have the mentality of a child of the King the mentality of a child of God. And so, Lord, thank you that we are your glorious children, full of light. Uh, Lord, uh, I, I bless each one, Lord, with health, wealth, and happiness in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.